Pat- Patrick, we've come here to Donegal here today, near Killy Garden, yeah. uh, to see your farm. You're running a dairy farm here. Maybe could you describe the yeah. system you have and yeah. what you're doing here? Very good. So, yeah, I'm uh, milking about 320 cows on a spring calving system. So we calve the cows compactly starting in the middle of February. Uh, the most of them are calved at this stage now in the middle of April. Uh, and we put them out to grass as soon as we can, which in Donegal this year was the 1st of March. Um, we're just about to go out full time now, so we tend to have a fairly heavy stocking rate on the grazing platform here. So uh, we would have to do a fair bit of buffer feeding, but the grass is starting to grow at this stage. So we'll go out full time from now and we'll still buffer feed a little bit of uh, feed to them, depending on what the grass growth rates are like. So uh, okay. again, the whole system's focused on grass growing as much as we can and uh, trying to harvest as much as we can the cows. Okay, and so just for people, you're in, you're in an area here called the Finn Valley. The yep. Finn River is there. Yep, when it's I, right behind us. Yep. When I was growing up, it was an area, was, uh, I heard quite a bit about the Finn Valley. Why, what's the characteristics of the Finn Valley? Yeah, well, it's a very intensively farmed area, but it's also very good soil in it. It's along a river and it's got that very good clay loam soil. Um, so it tends to have also gravel underneath as a subsoil, so it leaves it very dry. And of course, that kind of subsoil in a very dry environment wouldn't work. But because of our rainfall, we get 12 to 1500 millimetres of rain uh, a year here. So with that kind of rain and the kind of soil we have, the two come together very well to leave a very fertile and very good area to grow grass. So we would we grow about between 13 and 14 tonne on average uh, as dry matter per hectare across the, the farm each year. But some of the best fields will grow up to 17 or 18 tonnes. So that's as good as anywhere on the island, to be yes. honest with you. And so it's a soil type that could probably grow anything we, I'm seeing tilling across the, the river there. Yeah. yeah potatoes, has, anything you has, grow has, here. Historically, you? this would have been tillage country. Okay. So in my grandfather's time, this farm was a tillage farm. So he would have grown potatoes and wheat and oats and flax. Yeah. and a small amount of cows and a small amount of grass. Okay. But just the economics of, of uh, farming in Ireland over the last 20 years has led to a huge intensification of dairy in this area. Yes. So the creamery is just beside us here in Killy Gordon. I'm the closest dairy farmer to Arevo's liquid milk plant. So there's always been a lot of strong tradition of dairy in, but it has expanded enormously since the quotas went away. Okay. Had you a history of liquid milk here? Yeah, that's yeah. right. My father would have produced liquid milk. And when I came back farming, we would have focused then on, on the, um, the seasonal milk. Um, just there's some more money in the, in the grass bed system and yeah. we, we are paid completely on solids. We've bred the cows for solids so we've a very high EBI herd. Um, we were putting out a lot of milk solids and uh, the milk price rewards us for that. There's still a lot of liquid milk suppliers in this area because the creamery is here and looks mm. for that type of milk mm. but uh, it's not the system that I focused on. Okay so you said uh, you have a grass based system we're sitting or standing here beside uh, an underpass yeah. Um, a lot of your land is across the road, so yeah. grazing, good grazing infrastructure plays a key part of your... Yeah, it's essential um, because uh, with the rainfall we have, you have to have multiple access points and good road network, and we have that. And we have to continuously work with the roads to make sure the surfaces are good because yeah. it's a key driver of sore feet. If you don't have good surfaces in your roads, you're going to have a lot more sore feet. Yeah, so and, we've and rainfall is probably the big enemy there, is it, in terms oh, of yeah. big downpours? Yeah. And, and, and as well, as you can see, it's undulating ground. So then you have, if you don't manage the roads, you'll have a lot of washing effect on the roads so we did a, a job last year on the underpass to try and uh, mitigate the washing of the underpass so okay. we contoured and we, again we have a lot of regulations to meet in terms of water flow off the road so we've done a lot of work last year on the road so they're in good, they're in good shape. Okay so there's a, a, a quite a fall there so rain was causing a big issue there was yeah, it? it was, what, what, yeah. what was the reality yeah. of that? Yeah so it was washing just down to the sub so we had um, sort of two inch stone uh, underneath the 804 and it was washing the 804 off it so you're basically walking on the two inch stone very okay. often and even even more intensive flows at times so we contoured it and we have a, a pipe to take the, 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 uh, any big volume of water down to the bottom of the underpass because the lower side of the underpass is flat. Okay, so it just goes out there at a flat level or a slight contour down. So this, the steep side is on this side. Um, so we looked at the option of steps, but uh, uh, we went with that um, the gradient there with the, the 804 rolled in with a roller. And okay. it's done exceptionally well for me for the last year and a half. Now, okay. So I'm very pleased with what we did with Yeah. So I suppose back in 2014, we would have, um, I suppose, had contact from you. And your farm, I suppose, like a lot of farms, um, it's been growing. Yeah. We call it as going or whatever. So I think, you, you know, you, you're the housing requirement, basically, you needed more cubicles. Yeah. And uh, Simon would have done a lot of work for you over the years, I suppose, just maybe from that period, 2014. Could you describe your journey from there since? Yeah. So um, I suppose we got in contact with, uh, well, I suppose the mapping was the first point of contact with yourselves in Grass Tech. Um, so we got the farm mapped at that stage. And when, when Simon was up here doing the mapping, then we, we talked about the, the design of the farmyard because... The farms, farm yard had been more or less built by my father in the 1970s. Um, we had upgraded the milking parlour to a 25 unit swing over in 2001, but we'd done nothing on the cubicles. Now there was a, a shed with 100, cows, uh, 100 cubicles built in, t- in uh, 
1997 to 2000. So we had about 250 cubicle places, of which about 100 of them were effectively done. Uh, the rolled Newton rig type cubicles, the sheds were done. So we needed a lot of extra cubicles to, to, to house the cows. And we had the cow numbers in place, so it was very tough at this time of year when you had to keep the cows in and you didn't have the cubicles for them. So you ended up, the biggest consequence there was mastitis, no okay. question about that. When you have not enough spaces for the cows, you end up with big outbreaks of mastitis. And we had that in the last couple of years, and that's a very costly thing to deal with. So we wanted to upgrade the facilities, but I wanted to do it on a planned basis, because I've been in too many farmyards where there's been sheds added on and added on and added on, and there's no sort of overall plan of the yard. And it leads to a big difficulty around machinery, for example, because machinery's got very big, so there's not enough space uh, to be able to use the sheds properly. And also the cow flow within the sheds is important. Bear in mind that, you know, we try to get as much the cows out to grass as much as we can, but in this climate here in Donegal, I might have to put my cows in at any month of the year. Quite often it could be August, it could be June, just with the intensity of rainfall at certain times of the year. Okay. And some of my farm floods, so for example in August, a couple of years ago, we had a lot of the farm flooded. And if I had the opportunity to put the cows in at that stage that year, I should have done it. And what I had to do that year was to speed up the rotation on the drier ground. It meant I couldn't build autumn covers and I had to put the cows in full time much earlier that autumn. Right. But I didn't have the facilities for the cows at that stage. Okay, and, and now you do? Yes. And I suppose physically that work started prior to COVID, is that right? Yep, yep. So we, we, the first thing we went, when we designed the whole farmyard, it was a total plan. So new silage pits, a uh, shed for 220 extra cubicles, um, slurry capacity underneath that shed, and plans for a rotary milk and parlour as well. Put the planning in, in one go. It was Simon's strong recommendation at the time, and it was probably one of the greatest things we did. Now, it was tricky to get planning at that stage, but nothing compared to what it is today. So I have planning for everything I've done here, and I don't have to go back, and I'm very happy to have that as a, as a, as a card in the background because it is getting trickier and trickier to get planning. Okay. So I got all that done over the line, and then we had a, a big reorganisation of the ESB network to clear the site, so we had to work with them to do that. And then we started in uh, February of 2020, on the silage pits, uh, the exact same time as COVID had. Okay. So that was a challenge at that stage. Okay. Um, did the old silage pits occupy some of the space where the new shed has gone? Yeah, not so much new shed. They're on the site of potentially a rotary milk and powder in the future. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the walls were completely done, these sh and the silage pits were too small. Okay. So we didn't have capacity for the silage. Either. Okay. So we had some earthen bank silage pits, but we had big issues with the runoff and with effluent on those uh, earthen bank silage pits because the subsoil here is gravel. Okay. And you just can't store effluent. You need to have concrete to build a store effluent when you've gravel about. Okay. Yeah. So in terms of your your, um, your civils, and and we'll walk through your sheds in a minute, who, who was doing all the civils, say the ground clearing and stuff like that? Yeah, so so uh, it was Lynch Brothers were the, 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 um, the contractor with the diggers. Um, they came here to do the work for ESB initially, and um, I, I, they were interested in doing other work, so I took them on board and, and I was very pleased with the Lynch Brothers. They had an excellent uh, digger driver in Stephen Hegarty who spent the guts of over a year here uh, with diggers, and if we needed extra diggers in, they brought them in at certain times, but uh, it was a huge help in the whole... Um, the whole process to have a good digger on board. Okay. So um, that was that was the end of it. I, basically, I was the contractor, so everybody that worked with me were subcontractors. So uh, I had everybody. Uh, there was different contractors with different parts of it. So yeah. it was McManaman Engineering that did the shed, and it was Noel Gallon and his, uh, his son. Um, Martin, that did all the concrete work for me, did the tanks, um, and then there was the different uh, different contracts, subcontractors again. Lyndon Robinson did the aeration system. Uh, Clive Long did the, the wiring for me. Um, okay. So, you know, I'm very very pleased with all the contractors that I worked with. Great. But of course, there's a challenge in that, and that you have to get the whole thing to come together. If you've got one contractor finishing job, another contractor coming in to work on it, and the, uh, you need to make sure that they merge together effectively. And that's why the, the whole concept of having a good plan was essential to this. And the yeah. Success of it. I suppose it aids the project management when you're in the project yeah. manager. You have a plan. Yeah. Yep, that everyone yep. is singing to one yep. hymn sheet. And in my case, the, the, like I was ultimately the boss, so all decisions come through me. And the, the, the difficulty in that is that you're under a fair bit of pressure, but I'm very lucky I have a lot of people working on the farm with me, so it allowed me the time to to focus on the on the project management of the of the building. Okay. But um, the advantage is you get done everything done the way you want it. And if yes. you want to make small modifications, you're doing it. You can do it very easily as okay. long as you anticipate it before you actually put down concrete or dig a hole. Okay. So we might have a walk through your shed there. So yeah, absolutely. See it inter internally. Yep.